Simon McGree rides again. What makes you look so pretty? I bet you even had some sleep. Nope. I stayed with it, too. Just took a shave. But I am prettier than you are. How'd you make out? Oh, shouldn't I ask? Don't ask. I won't. I guess we're real bright boys. So is Carter and Jackson and all the rest. You know, if we get some sleep, we might come up with a fresh approach, new angle. It's rough, I know, but we've got to get the missing key, and fast. So we can't pamper ourselves. The Chief's on my back, the Pentagon is on his. We've got to complete that formula, sleep or no sleep. I think we almost had it in our hands. And that's the person of the one guy who could most easily come up with the answer. Allied intelligence has been trying. Yeah, sure, I know. For six months now. How can a man be in a restaurant one second and then disappear off the face of the earth? They couldn't get to him with money. He's too old to be lured by a babe. He's nuts. I'm beginning to sound like you. You look awful. Why don't you get some shut-eyes, shall we say, for about uh, two hours? And I'll meet you back here at 10 o'clock. Thanks. You're so big-hearted. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How did it go? Nothing. Same. You better take a look at this. It might help. We received it from Broskin at MIT. I don't think he's on the right track, but you better check. You look terrible. Why don't you get some sleep? And now for some encouraging news. Intelligence advises us they've finally gotten a real break. Heard that one before. Yeah, but this time the information is that he's definitely been located. He's escaped into Austria and he's making for Vienna.
The last we heard of him was a radio check report. He had made contact with one of our people. He was heading this way, passing through the town of... Uh, here it is, Lipek. Only 40 miles from the border. But that was three days ago. With any luck, he should have been across by now. We should have heard. He was told to contact us as soon as he crossed. Of course, that doesn't mean we have lost him. He may have gotten right up to the border and then been diverted. Or maybe he had to hide a while. It seems so ironic that a man can travel 1,200 miles undercover and then get caught in the last 40. Dear Helen, I'd like to thank you for all the time and trouble you've taken with my project. Of course, he could have come out farther north or farther south. But we have known by now. He would have shown. Thanks to you, my ambition to have the works of Homer. Ah. Everything indicates he was heading this way, I'll admit. But where is he? Thanks to you, my ambition to get the works of Homer translated into Braille seemed like a possibility. What good do you think that's going to do? But in spite of our several delightful meetings and luncheons, the publishers inform me that such a project is not, in their opinion, economically feasible. I see absolutely no point in writing that, Ellen, or in your seeing her. That is, unless you have a personal motive. No, she came here to America in order to be with him when he gets free. She took a temporary job in the Braille room at a library. He could go directly to her. Isn't that sufficient reason for being interested in her? But the man will call us if she gets across. He will call us. He could have forgotten the number. The professor has a mind like Einstein, Owen. How could he forget the telephone number? I don't know. It's been done before. Maybe it was scared out of him. Maybe a machine gun scared it out of him. And he's wandering about somewhere in a daze. In that case, what does he do? Instinct leads him home. Well, home's where his daughter is. That's why I'm watching her. And I don't see any reason why you shouldn't know that uh, I like her very much. I give you permission to like her very much. Well, thank you. I'm going to burn tonight. Be back tomorrow. You know where to reach me. I have a hunch I may have some news for you. I may even have him. In which case, take him out to the castle at once. Let him meet the chief. Then fly him and his daughter back to the States. So take good care of him. If you get him. Oh, I'll get him. Well, after all, that's why we brought you here, isn't it? This Hildebrand is a brainy guy, Alan. Too brainy. The consequences of not finding him could be disastrous. Yes, I'm aware of that. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Peter speaking. Hello. Hello. Well, who is it? Hello, this is Peter speaking. Hello. Excuse me, please. I'm sure somebody has fallen here, perhaps after him. Now tell me. You see, I crossed the border last night. I am Ernst Hildebrand. Oh, that's good. Now, where are you calling from? I have an envelope for you, but excuse me, I am in such a nervous state from so long as in the phone booth, on the street, on the corner. I'm wearing a grey netted scarf and a nut and an old grey hat. You will come very soon. Now stay there. It's only a minute or two from here. Yes, that's right. I'll be round in a minute or two. But stay there. When I come up, I'll say, are you waiting for Helen? Right.
Excuse me. Are you waiting for Helen? You didn't punch your slip right. Always put the queue in front of the call letters. I'm very sorry. That means braille room. Thank you. Carl, will you put these back on the stack for me, please? Certainly, Miss Hilton. So happy. You look well. You look prettier than ever. How did you get here? Later. I'll tell you later. But you're here. That's all that matters. And darling, I come to you because I was frightened. And I ran. But now I have seen you. I'm not more frightened. Now I have to make a call to the information and go to them. Oh, not yet. Please, not yet. I will be back. Then we will talk. We talk. Have you ever seen her before? It's Mrs. Beaver. She works here. Why? Hell, I have to go. Wait. I'll go with you. I'll ask for the day off. It'll just take a second. I shouldn't have stopped at all. I should have telephoned first again. It's very important, but I had to see you. Father, what is it? I think I feel, feel better if I give this and It's very important. I know everything that's in it. I can't remember. If anything happens to me, you will deliver it to the intelligence and... Wait in there. Go and get permission and come with me. I'll be back in just a minute.
Hildebrand with you? She's in the director's office, I think. Will you tell her two gentlemen are asking for her? They are from a publisher, I should imagine. What's happening there? Something's wrong. We must call someone. What's happening there? It's Miss Hildebrand's father. Don't go too fast. Blow slippery. Thank you. I've been telephoning you for nearly ten minutes. Yes, I got called away. Is he here? Yes. I thought he would be. He came in and spoke to his daughter. She's arranging to go out with him. Where is he now? Waiting for her. In there. She's gone to the director's office to get... Did you get my letter? I'm sorry, Alan. I won't be able to have lunch with you. Not today. My father's here. Oh. Is he all right? Something has happened.
Please sit down, everybody. Are you the police? Do as you are told, everybody, please. It's me, Carl. As you may suspect, there's been a serious accident. Miss Hildebrand's father has been killed here in this room. He came in here only a few moments ago, and now he's dead. Well, you can all help by answering a few questions. But what did you hear in the last ten minutes or so? Somebody tapped on the door, and then I heard Miss Hildebrand go out. And after that? She walked out with someone down the corridor. No one followed her out? No. Now, what happened then? Later, someone came in and sat down. Where? There. Was it a man or a woman? It was a man. Well, how could you tell? Because of his heavy footsteps. Oh. Anything else? In a little while, he went out, then came back again. How do you know it's the same man who came back? Because the footsteps were exactly the same. Oh, I see. And uh, no one followed him out? No. Did anyone else come in? The man was sitting here. He went out. How did you know it was a man? Did he speak to you? No, but his coat had a strong smell of cigar smoke. And there was something else. What? It never sounded as if he were reading. Well, what do you mean? His hands were moving either too fast or too slow. And sometimes they didn't move at all. No, he wasn't reaching. Since Miss Hildebrand left this room, have any of you moved from where you are now? No. You're quite sure? Yes. yes. When Miss Hildebrand's father was killed, what exactly did you hear? There was a moan, and then the sound of the body falling. And then? Someone heard it. How long after? A few moments. And during that time, what did you hear? It sounded like someone was searching for something. How long did that go on? Quite a while. Hildebrand all right? She went home. Oh? She simply broke down. She couldn't say anything, she couldn't do anything but cry. And so she ran out for a thing. Would you like her address? Oh, no, thank you. I've got it. I'll, I'd better get another. Oh, excuse me. Would you spare me a few moments? Now, did you notice anyone new this morning? Someone who came here for the first time? Well, I saw two gentlemen only a few minutes ago. They asked for the Hildebrand. Do you know where they are now? No, I don't. Do you have papers on him? He must have. Find anything? No. Where's Miss Hildebrand? Gone. She heard you questioning those blind people. She came back while I was outside the door. What'd she do? She asked who you were. And? I told her. What? I had to. Well, where is she now? Gone home? No, she's gone into the park. She couldn't stand the thought of being questioned by the police, so left. I came out here with her, but she wanted to be alone. Hmm. Now, Carl. When you were in the Braille room just now, did you know all those people? All except the one in the window, the one in the tweed jacket. And what's he look like? Smart-looking guy. 
clean shave and his brown hair and piercing eyes. Do you notice anyone else this morning you didn't know? No. Then he's our man. The one in the window, I'm sure of it. Did you see him in the building at any other time? Yes, after I tried to telephone you, he came out of the braille home so fast I thought he was going to kill himself. Much too fast for a blind man. He's no blind man. He can no more read braille than I can. That's right. I remember he didn't even seem to know the routine how to ask for the book he wanted. He didn't punch his slip right. There was no cue in front of the call letters. Holy smoke, right under our nose. Well, you better get back. What are you going to do? Keep my eyes open. He may come back. What for? He's got what he wanted. How do you know? He took a long time searching for it. I found that out. I remember something else. When I saw Hildebrand on the corridor, he was searching in his pocket like he was going to give his daughter an envelope or something. Did he? I don't know. Well, it's my business to find out. I suppose you'd better know the truth, Helen. I've had to do a bit of masquerading, military intelligence. I'm sure you understand. I'd have told you if I could... I wish you'd go. I suppose you wouldn't like to walk a little down the river. I'm sorry I had to pose as someone else. At least, well, I'm sorry I had to do it. You see, we were expecting your father to show up in two weeks. I knew what he meant to you. I thought that if you knew we were expecting him, you might get worried, excited, and perhaps make a slip that would... Your little game didn't work very well, did it? Tell me, Helen, did your father give you any papers he was carrying? You haven't the slightest feeling. I have. No, I you can't... haven't. This whole thing is nothing but a cloak and dagger act to you. My father meant nothing to you. I mean nothing to you. I know how you feel, but I don't think you're being fair, you know. He did. Who can be fair? Can't you understand, Alan? He was my father. He was a wonderful man. All his life, he loved learning, truth. This is what comes of it. They want him, you want him. Between the two of you, you kill him doesn't matter. Keep right on looking for papers and envelopes. You have no feeling. You haven't the slightest sense of decency. I'm sorry, I can't help it if I hurt you, but this is something that threatens everybody, affects everyone. That's why I'm going to ask you again, and you're going to tell me. Now, did your father say anything to you about carrying any papers, an envelope? Yes. Did he give them to you? No. Did he start to give them to you? Yes, but he got frightened. Went back into the railroad to wait. Then he did have the papers? Yes. And that was the last time you saw him alive? Yes. Oh, uh, I'm sorry to have to keep after you like this. But are you telling me the truth? Because if you're not, if you're telling me that you don't know anything about that envelope, it'll be disastrous for you. Exactly as it was for your father. And I don't want anything to happen again. I'm guilty enough already. You needn't worry about me. I've told you the truth. Well, 
Perhaps you'd better come and have some coffee with me or something. No. Yes, I know. Didn't you take care of the matter? Yes, I did. I did as I was instructed. Sometimes we should do more. I was really lucky. I got him only minutes before they did. Don't worry, you won't tell them a thing. I took care of that all right. Are you sure? I know, because I saw one of the men in the corridor and again just now in the library steps. You seem to be proud of yourself. Well, he won't talk, I know that. Where is it? There was nothing. Where is it? I looked very carefully, but he didn't have it. Where is it? Listen, I risked much more than I should have. I made certain there wasn't one scrap of paper on him, not one scrap. Then he passed it to someone. Fool. Always half a job. But who could have? Idiot. Don't you see what you have done? Killed him, yes. But it's too late. He's given them everything. But he couldn't have. He has. He wasn't there that long. And I was watching him all the time except for just a moment. And what was that? See, he tapped on the glass in the door. She went out. They stood in the corridor. I couldn't hear them very well, but I watched. But then for one moment they turned the corner out of sight and... Uh... That was it. Obviously. But then he came right back. I never saw... Uh... That's enough. That's when he gave it to her. Instead of getting it, you come back here and are proud. And I'm responsible. I'm responsible for your half done botched up job. All right then. Tell what you want me to do now. We want that envelope. She's got it. Now we'll look at it. question you about your father, a lot of cold, hard questions, well, that's part of my job. But forgetting that completely, if you can, I want you to know that what started out as purely business has turned into something quite different. Alan, there's one thing I'd like to know. Oh, what's that? You say you tried to protect my father. Now you say you're concerned about me. Why? I had no special information or valuable papers. Listen, Helen, your father tried to escape on his own account. We did all we could to help him to safety, but I'm afraid things didn't work out that way. But the reason I want to protect you is because I feel very close to you. Very close. I wish I could believe that. Well, you can.
How long have you been back? Half an hour. Do you know anything? Anything what? Well, anything that's been going on. That boy you have in the library called. Did he tell? He covered the main points. Yes, I thought he did from the way you looked. Oh. How do I look? Green, seasick green. Well, then, uh, it isn't something either one of us can be proud of. What's that, a report? What do you think? It's all over. What the boys say? Said that after you left, you saw the guy take a bus in front of the library. And? He chased him. Two buses, three caps, and lost him down in L.A. Is that the finish of the report? Yes, I should think so. Yes. I think you might as well move out of here tomorrow. It keeps the rent paid. It's central for certain things. But there's no point in your staying on. In fact, the ideal spot to spend a month in the fall when one's just pulled off the biggest failure of one's life. I wouldn't blame yourself too much. A brilliant guy's dead. Stuff's gone. Whose fault is it then? Alan, you did what you could. The rest is chance. That's not what she thinks. Who, the daughter? Hmm. She thinks we led him on in some way, urged him to escape, and failed him. We didn't leave him on. He escaped himself. The underground found him, and all we did from the one was to try and help. Oh, this coffee's terrible. I'm going out. Going to eat? Maybe I'll go down to that library again. I didn't really have a chance to look around the room. Aaron, if you want to see the girl for your own sake, you might as well, without cooking up these accusers. I'm not quitting. You should. We have lost. The case is closed. I don't see that it is. Well, we can't bring the man to life, can we? And we can't recover papers. We might. Alan, it's all over. If you want to go out with the girl tonight, go ahead. No harm. You are too serious anyway. I haven't the slightest intention of seeing her. Anyhow, she won't be there. She's gone home. But I feel if I go back to that library, I may be able to find something. And so when Carl, the boy, calls, tell him where I am, will you? Yes. As for the girl, sure she figures. She thinks that her father died for nothing. And I'd give anything to show her that he didn't. You like her a lot? Yes, a lot. See you in the morning. I knew this was going to happen. I knew it that first lunch we had together out on the terrace. Maybe it was the quiet in her eyes, the laughing and the being serious at the same time, the wine and the river going by. Ah, now look what's happened. Miserable existence we have. How can a man ever get his wine and his woman together in the sunlight without something busting in on him?
Polis. Sorry, we have to borrow you. But there's something we want. The envelope your father gave you, please. You killed him. Why did he leave us? He was treated well. He was given everything he asked for, and yet he turned straighter. He was never on your side. As you wish. We are not here to argue. You threatened him, forced him to work for you. He knew if he didn't, you'd take it out on me. Why go into all this? You know what we've come for. Give it to us and we'll go. Miss Hildebrand, we have nothing against you. We have the slightest desire to harm you. But we must have that envelope that your father gave you. And we must have it now. Let's have that envelope. He never gave it to me. Let's have that envelope. I don't have it. <gasps> Where did you put it? I never had it. Don't lie to me. Where did you put it? For your own sake, stop talking. It's the truth, I swear it. Why do you make us go for this? Why don't you tell us and save yourself? <laughs> All right, she'll tell us. Where's the envelope he gave you? What did you do with that envelope? Is it here in this room? Is it? You know, if he can make you tell us here, we will take you to some place quiet, where we can. Have you given it to someone else? Did you leave it in the library? Answer! Answer! <laughs> Back sedan that was out there just now. Try and follow it. I'll get you some brandy. I didn't have a document of my father's, something in an envelope. I'm sorry to have to say this, Helen, but that's good news to me. It means they didn't get it. It means that between the time your father tried to give you the envelope and the time he was killed, he did something else with it. Gave it to someone else? No, put it somewhere. He knew he was being followed, so he put it somewhere. But where? Well, anywhere. Anywhere where he could hide it quick. Then it's in the Braille room. Yes, it must be. You know, I had a hunch there might be something there. I went there just now. I tried to get in, but it was locked. So I came here to see if you'd come with me. You don't discourage easily, do you? No. Of course, I'll go with you. Good. I'm terribly sorry. I know it's against the rules, but I've forgotten something. Would you let me in?
Let's try and figure this out. Let's try and use our brains. He hid it somewhere in this room. And the room was full of blind people, or so he thought. So he did it openly, and it could be anywhere. He was killed near the desk. Yes. Well, that's where we'll start again. I don't understand. All right. Now he comes in through that door, sits at the table in this chair. The killer sitting opposite, waiting for him. It may have been someone else out in the corridor. Quite possibly. And whatever made him nervous might have been out there. So he goes out to sea, and he comes back again. But that. I don't know, but he did. Whatever frightened him in the first place, frightened him the second time. So he decided to try and hide that envelope. And wrote a note to you, explaining where it was. That's uh, the pencil and pad on the floor, but he didn't get as far as that. The man who was pretending to be blind suddenly gets up and stabs him. But he didn't see where the envelope was, and that's where this doesn't add up. Funny? Well, what's funny? What's this doing here? Oh, what do you mean? There's no cue on it. Every Brea book has a cue on the call slip. Well, what was the book? Oriental oh, history or something. Helen, I've got it. When your father went out of this room for the second time, he hid that envelope in a book on Carl's truck. Then he bought this back and planted it on the desk for you. Where are those books now? Downstairs on the bookshelf. Well, what are we waiting for? The door was closed when we came in.
Hi, sonny boy. Still out of there? Well, I'm not working on my grocery bills. So why don't you take that vacation with your family you're always talking about? Might do you some good. You're very funny. Maybe you forget I'm stuck in this sweatshop for a reason. You sound so conscientious. Well, I'm not here to kill my time talking to you. You know, there's a rumor going around that you know a little something about higher mathematics. That's strictly a rumor. What's this? Wait a minute. Seven point two to the fourth power. Kinetic energy. Holy macro. This is it. Where'd this come from? Vienna. Dr. Hildebrand managed to break through. However, they followed him in. They tried to get this, but they didn't. Hildebrand was killed. Killed? Yep. So I guess we can call this case closed. We've got all the figures. We've checked them. It proves. Well, as you were saying, I guess they ought to take me a little trip. So if you don't mind, I'd like to have last year's vacation. There's just one little thing before you leave. They've asked us to give them a little advice on a new minor project. As a matter of fact, they want this broken down as fast as possible. Oh, now wait. They can't. Here we go again. Have fun.